Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Puya monthly lecture series. Uh, on Tuesday, a ca catastrophic news happened. We were informed that the great and everlasting poet, Hushang Eftahaj, went to eternity. My condolences to all Iranians. We will have a complete program in the honor of honoring uh, Mr. Hushang Eftahaj uh, Saye. Khamusham, amma daram be awaz gham khud midaham ush. Vakti kisi awaz mikhanat, khamush bayat bud. غم داستانی تازه سر کرده است اینجا سراپا گوش باید بود دردیست چون خنجر یا خنجری چون درد این من که در من پیوسته می گید در من کسی آهسته می گید My heartfelt gratitude goes to Dr. Leila Golami, our scholar and speaker tonight, the member of our Puya board and Persian Cultural Center, the respected participants, and all those who kindly support Puya and contribute to our organization. I will briefly introduce Puya to those who do not know how, who do, who do not know much about this organization. Puya stands for Professional Organization of Iranian Americans in Atlanta. Puya is a non-religious, non-political, non-profit organization, which is an affiliate of Persian Cultural Center or Kanun Farhangi Iranian Atlanta. It was established in 2012 to celebrate the heritage and achievements of all Iranian American professionals. The language for Puya is English to attract our generation 1.5, generation two, Americans and other nationalities to find out about our achievements, culture, and civilization. Puya works tirelessly to uphold the three pillars of its mission, to provide an opportunity for Iranian American professionals to network and support each other, to help the next generation of Iranian American professionals to succeed and prosper, to promote a positive image and counter the negative depiction of Iran and Iranian professionals. We have a board of directors, that of different of uh, Kanun, uh, of which I, am the, I have the honor to be the president. I have a PhD and a postdoctoral in psycholinguistics. And our honorable members are Dr. Hamid Arabnia, computer scientist, university professor, University of Georgia. Dr. Shahriyar Haidari, assistant to the provost of uh, Piedmont University and president of Conn. Dr. Abdi Modarisi, computer specialist and uh, PhD and uh, a very active member of Conn. Dr. Hamid Gamistani, Professor, professor of Georgia Tech, materials scientist, PhD, and a very important person in Khan. Dr. Sam uh, Asil, Professor Emeritus, nu Nuclear Physics, uh, Mr. Mohsen Mostajabi, Civil Engineer, Mr. Wahid Samimi, Electrical Engineer, Mr. Nima Aza, Construction Management Engineer, Ms. Sanaz Musavi, artist, entrepreneur, and literary expert. Before I introduce our distinguished speaker, I would like to announce the two future programs. On Tuesday, August 16, 7.30 uh, Eastern time, uh, Dr. Abbas Naimir Jorshari will speak on 
آین خردمندی در نهاد معلم سه شنبه 16 آگست ساعت هفت و نیم شب به وقت شرق آمریکا سخنرانی آقای دکتر عباس نعیمی جورشری از ایران از از رشت از گیلان در واقع تحت عنوان آین خردمندی در نهاد معلم جمعه 19 آگست ساعت هفت و نیم شب به وقت شرق آمریکا سخنرانی آقای دکتر تیرخش امادی تحت عنوان بیماری های لسه عوامل مرتبط با آن و جایگزینی دندان های از دست رفته با ایمپلانت های, ایمپلانت های دندانی دکتر تیرخش امادی A dentist will talk on August 19. Now it is time to present our scholar, Dr. Leila Olami, our young scholar. Dr. Leila Olami was born in Oromia, Iran. She received her BA in English language and literature from Oromia University and her MA in applied linguistics and linguistics from Khwarazmi University, Tehran. She has a PhD in linguistics and applied linguistics from the Department of English at Arizona State University, Arizona. She's a Marion L. Brit Britain uh, postdoctoral fellow in the Georgia Institute of Technology, Georgia Tech. She will be teaching three communication courses uh, at Georgia Tech. Her research interests primarily lie in the areas of incidental focus on form, and, and uh, she has done a lot of uh, research, and she has published many articles in uh, different, you know, actually linguistic and uh, language uh, uh, journals. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Golami. Dr. Golami is our young and uh, uh, published uh, scholar, and it's an honor to have you tonight. And uh, uh, we are all ears. Thank you so much for giving your time to us from on, the, on behalf of uh, Puya, Kanun, uh, and the members uh, of Kanun. Uh, uh, I thank you so much, you know, for actually allotting this time uh, to give a lecture to uh, Puya. Thank you so much. Of course, it's my absolute pleasure. I'd like to express my gratitude to Professor Barzagar and Professor Garmesani. It's my absolute honor to be among uh, highly esteemed Iranian scholars in the United States. Um, I'm so grateful to Professor Barzagar to give me an opportunity to give a short presentation about an area of study in linguistics which could be of interest to many Iranians living in the United States. So with that, uh, I start my presentation. So let me just share my screen. Okay, so today's presentation is about Persian language policy for Iranian Americans living in the United States. Okay, the purpose of this presentation is to describe family language practices, beliefs, and management approaches in relation to maintenance of Persian language in second generation Iranian immigrants in different parts of the United States. This presentation focuses on Persian speaking Iranian families to better understand family language policies and its impact on dual language development of children in areas where the heritage community is more dispersed. So heritage community refers to all Persian speaking Iranians moving to United States who speak English as a second language. So let's see what um, family language policy is. It is, it is defined as overview of child language learning and use as functions of parental ideology decision-making and strategies concerning languages and literacies, as well as the broader social cultural context of family life. Okay, so the United States, as a matter of fact, houses the largest number of international immigrants from around the world. The country has held the largest absolute number of foreign-born population from around the world between the years of 1990s to 1970s, according to United Nations. The linguistic repertoire of United States is very diverse. However, it doesn't reflect such 
you know, culture and linguistic diversity. According to US Census, almost 79% of individuals who were five years of age or older only speak English at home. So mm -hmm. even though there are many second generation students living and studying in the United States, however, according to US state census data, 79% of individuals living in the United States who are five years old or older speak English at home, only English. So immigrants entering the United States bring a rich linguistic diversity to the country, and it's the, or even the case for Iranians moving to United States. However, after a generation or two, they will most likely share one characteristic, English monolingualism. So even though there are diverse communities coming from wide range of linguistic backgrounds coming to United States, especially from Iran, for different reasons that I'm going to talk about, English monolingualism is what happens in the current society of the United States. Linguistic assimilation, meaning that when you immigrate to a country, you would like to assimilate your language to the target language. You try to, as far as possible, perfect the target language, which is English in the United States. Linguistic assimilation has long been regarded as a positive step toward having a more united country. Consequently, English is the only language that has been widely supported by policymakers, educators, and the mainstream society throughout the years in the United States. Bilingualism, which is the ability to speak two or more languages, is a rare phenomenon in the second generation of Im immigrants in the United States, because the majority become English dominant or English monolinguals by the onset of adulthood. Sociolinguistics believe that the complete linguistic conversion from a heritage language, in the case of Farsi, Persian, to English happens in three generations. The first generation that arrives in the US, all Iranians who the first generation of Iranians who arrived in the US, they attempted to learn English, but they preferred to speak heritage language, which is Farsi, Persian, as much as possible. These are, this is the only case for first generation Iranians moving to immigrating to the United States. The second generation tended to speak heritage language, which is Farsi in intimate settings, but you, they use English in public domains. And the third generation of Iranian Americans use English in all settings and has no effective proficiency in heritage language. It's, it is based on the US uh, you know, data on linguistic repertoires of the country. So effective maintenance of heritage language, whether it's Persian, Farsi, or any other heritage language over generations can be made possible with diligence, support, and a strong commitment from families. So I'm going to talk about the role of families in maintenance of Farsi as heritage, lang as heritage language for Iranian Americans living in the United States. So, um, However, given the powerful conforming forces of English speaking society, a strong and constant commitment to heritage language use can be very challenging for parents living in the United States without support or interaction that modulates the societal pressures that pri privileges standard American English. So still we do believe that Iranian families living in the United States play a very consequential role in the maintenance of Farsi. However, given the socio-political dynamics of American society, it is very challenging for parents to do so. Family is an important sector in the investigation of um, heritage language maintenance in immigrant populations in the United States. Researchers look at family in order to examine the decisions about languages children, better what, what languages they should raise their children with, and the way public discourses are reflected in those decisions. So family is the most important factor when it comes to the maintenance of heritage language, in this case, Farsi Persian, and its flourishment in the society. 
The largest population of Iranians, as a matter of fact, immigrated to the United States in two waves, prior to Islamic revolution and after post-revolution, as you all know. Because the Islamic revolution and its aftermath marked the largest wave of Iranian immigration to the United States, the general public has largely and continuously identified Iranians in relation to Islam, extremism, and in some cases, terrorism. This kind of ideology that exists in the um, you know, current society of the United States impacts the impacts how Iranian families could help maintain Farsi and could help their children to have uh, you know, effective proficiency in their heritage language, which is Farsi. So these kind of ideologies, socio-political factors in the society of the United States influences that. So one of these factors is that Iranians are identified as, you know, equal to Islam, extremism, and terrorism, unfortunately. Iranians are misrepresented in the US because of socio-political factors, because of, you know, especially which was, you know, uh, heightened during Trump's administration. So let's see who are Iranian Americans really. According to United States Census data uh, published in 2018, 470,000 individuals reported their first or second generation ancestry as Iranians. However, other organizations such as the Iranian Studies Group and Public Affairs Alliance of Iranian Americans claim that this number to be between 700,000 to 1 million individuals identifying themselves as, you know, uh, coming from Iranian ancestry. Additionally, Iranians are one of the most highly educated groups of immigrants in the United States. Based on one census data, 64% of Iranians in the US are reported to be college graduates and 51% have high status professions and 52.6% speak English very well. According to economists, Iran's economic capital is best predicted by human capital. And this you know, high rate of intellectual Iranians coming to the United States is a big factor showing that on the global scale, Iran ranks the world's fifth largest producer of graduates in engineering, followed by Russia and, uh, and United States, which is impressive. Okay, Persian speakers in the United States. According to again one uh, U.S. Census data, four hundred seventy four uh, sorry four hundred seven uh, thousand individuals over five years of age in the United States speak Farsi at home. A few points are essential to consider in this regard. Firstly, although a great number of Persian speakers are Iranians, two other nationalities, Afghans and Tajiks, are largely speak you know, Persian language as well, however, different dialects of Persian language. Secondly, the number of Persian speakers in census data does not represent the number of Iranians, Afghans, or Tajiks in the US. It simply represents those who chose to identify Persian as their main language. There are many Iranian Americans living in the, in the United States that do not identify themselves as Iranian or do not, um, you know, credit, do not, do, they don't give any credit to Farsi as their heritage language for, for some reasons. Thirdly, people of Iran, Afghanistan, and Tajikistan speak different varieties of Persian, which representatively are Farsi, Dari, and Tajik. Lastly, and most importantly, besides Persian, which is the official language in, in these three countries, Iran, Afghanistan, and Tajikistan, several other languages are widely spoken by these nations. Depending on their geographical and historical background, roughly half of Iranians speak a variety of languages, including but not limited to Azari, which is my mother tongue, Kurdish, Gilaki, Mazandarani, Baluchi, Arabic, Turkmeni, and Armenian, and so on and so forth. Okay, let's talk about a model of language policy. So uh, we talked about 
the role of um, the, the extent number of Iranians immigrating to the United States and the fact that there are a great number of them identifying them as Persian. However, there are others that do not identify themselves as Iranians. And we talked about the socio-political factors that influence the role of, you know, how, how Persian language is considered in the American society, the fact that um, Iranians are associated with Islam, terrorism, extremism for socio-political reasons. And the fact that many Iranians, a high rate percentage of Iranians living in the United States are considered college graduate with professional degrees, which is rare among other nationalities immigrating to the United States. So let's talk about what family language policy is and then about family language policy among Persians living in the United States. According to a model uh, proposed by Spolsky, three components for language policy of speech community, in this case, Persian speech community include language practice and habitual use patterns, beliefs and ideologies about languages held by members of that community, in this case, Persian, and efforts to modify or influence the values and practices by and type of the language in, in using language intervention, language planning, and language management. So these three components are the key components of family language policy. One of them is what practices, what habitual use of patterns are in that speech communities. The second refers to our ideology. What beliefs do we hold about um, that heritage language, which is Farsi? And then what efforts do we make in order to plan, manage, and intervene in, in helping to maintain that heritage language, in this case, Farsi? Well, we know it goes without saying that language policy does not occur in isolation. There is a complex web of connections between the three elements of language policy, including social factors, political factors, and economic factors influencing these language policies among any speech communities, whether it's Iranian Americans or any other speech community. Researchers have also uh, developed the notion of language policy to a novel field of study called family language policy. They have defined uh, the study of family language policy as an overview of child language learning and use as functions of parental ideologies, decision-making and strategies that these families use concerning languages and literacies, as well as the broader social and cultural context of family life. Families develop their language policy based on their perceptions of social structures and what they believe will best serve families standing in the society. So one big factor influencing what language policy families choose, whether it's among Iranian American families or any other families in other speech communities is social structures and what they believe that best serves families standing in society. So family language policy studies are interdisciplinary in nature. They take anthropology, anthropology, sociolinguistics, and psycholinguistic approaches in order to understand this phenomenon. The literature on family language policy and heritage language maintenance suggests that parental language practices in bilingual homes is the primary predictor of children's heritage language maintenance with no observed cost to their social language proficiency. So, so in this case, for C, parental language practice is the most influential factor that could influence the maintenance of Farsi among Iranian Americans living in the United States. So this is the more, even though there are many other factors influencing it, whether this is it social, economic, uh, other factors, but you know, family practices as the most dynamic and influential factor influencing uh, how, how, what language pol policies parents choose and how they maintain the, the language of their heritages, which is far C in this case. 
Researchers have found also that the role of mothers to be one of the most influential factors on heritage language maintenance in children. So even though parents in general play a big role, but among parents, the role of mother is even more influential. Uh, mothers are the strongest gatekeepers of language maintenance. A mother strongly impacts her children's level of heritage language proficiency due to their higher usage of heritage language proficiency in their interactions with, with family members. Research shows that children who tend to use more heritage language Farsi among Iranian Americans with their mothers, either because of mothers limited English proficiency or due to their conception of their mothers as, as cultural barriers, as cultural takeovers and language gatekeepers, they tend to uh, have better proficiency in English. So because of mother, maybe because of mother's limited proficiency in English, or because of the fact that their mother is gatekeeper, their mother is culture warrior for them. So they tend to speak and learn English more effectively in order to be in contact, communicate very well with their mother, especially even though like the role of father is also important. And the fact that these their mother brings cultural heritage to the family in, in the American society where they are, you know, um, deprived of having, you know, rich cultural understanding of Iran's and Persian language. However, influence of mothers and fathers can vary depending on the country of origin and the culture of families. Increasing socioeconomic demands of modern living can take away the time and energy immigrant mothers used to have to, their, to spend on their children and can change language dynamics in families. So even though we say parents play a big role and among parents, mothers play a big role in maintaining heritage language among families, they, it is believed that socioeconomic economic factors influence the extent to which mothers can invest in enhancing, you know, maintaining heritage language for their children. The literature on heritage language maintenance and parental beliefs show that many parents consider heritage language, which is like Farsi, Persian in this case, is the essence of who they are and maintaining it as an attempt to hold on to their roots and preserve their children's connection to grandparents and extended family. So it seems like mothers pl play the role of gatekeepers and they insist on maintaining heritage language, in this case Farsi among Iranian Americans, in order to uh, um, hold to their roots and preserve their children's connection to their to their previous generation and their extended family. Heritage language is the medium through which parents convey their cultural values to their children and enable them to become the kind of men and women they want them to do. It's a quote from Iranian families living in the US about their you know, uh, family language policies. However, parents express values in heritage language maintenance do not always translate to language practices when described by children. In contrast to immigrant parents' high affinity and motivation to maintain heritage language, which is far C, children, if the research shows that, are more likely to make personal and emotional connection through the societal language, in this case, English. Second generation immigrant children in the United States tend to use English for all purposes, even when communicating with their heritage language dominant parents. So even though the parents make efforts to keep you know, connections with the previous generations and with their heritage language, but it shows, research shows that second generation children, not necessarily Persian, they tend to uh, you know, make emotional connections with the target language, English in this case, in American society. Uh, there are three empirical studies that have examined language ideologies of Iranian immigrant families in the United States. Uh, based on a doctoral study, um, the, all the participants in this doctoral study expressed a desire for their children to know Persian, Farsi, and most to have a Persian Persian only, Farsi only family language policy in their homes. 
Uh, so be, they, they, they had the desire. So based on this study that asked about Iranian Americans living in the US, whether they want their children to you know, speak Farsi at home and keep these connections with their heritage language or whether to speak target language English, most parents express a positive desire for their children to learn and speak Farsi at home. Parents' motivation to promote Farsi were driven by sociocultural benefits of bilingualism and a sense of responsibility to transmit their culture to the next generation. So these parents felt that it's their responsibility to you know, convey this culture to the next generation. And they believe that being able to speak two languages rather than just one language, English, is a plus. It's going to um, uh, help benefit their children in the society. And lastly, confirming several studies in the literature, experienced Iranian parents showed an increasingly susceptibility to language shift and it drifted away from Persian only language policy compared to novice parents. So they believe that um, maybe just having Farsi only family language policy may, may hinder their, their children's proficiency in English language and their, their roles and how they can prosper in the society. So they were like, even though they wanted to convey cultural heritage, even though they wanted to maintain Farsi, and, but they, they had doubts whether they should consider Farsi only as the family language policy or no, there should be a room for other languages and target language, which is English as a family language policy as well or not. Two other extraordinary studies also concluded that um, they used interviews with Iranian parents in northeast of the United States. They said that they decided to teach Farsi to their children because they they wanted their to, in order to convey sociocultural and cognitive advantages of bilingualism and its function as a bridge connecting a family to its cultural roots. So most of the parents in the United States, they believe that it's of paramount importance to uh, teach their children to speak Farsi. However, they had doubts whether to have just Farsi only family language policy or they should give room to other languages, especially English, because of the role of English in the society of United States. And the fact that they were, they were, uh, you know, they expressed positive desire to help children to speak, to learn Farsi and speak Farsi, because they wanted their children to get familiar with, the, the, with their cultural roots. Family language policy literature uh, also names various language strategies that could help families to maintain heritage language, in this case, Farsi. One of them is expanding heritage language use beyond everyday activities. So even though there are many families here, I have met many Iranian families that they speak Farsi in their daily language use. But one of the strategies to even help foster um, heritage language maintenance is that to extend uh, the use of uh, this Family, target family language policy, which is Farsi, Farsi to beyond everyday activities, maybe just being able to read, write, not just speak Farsi during the interactions at home. And then scaffolding children's heritage language use. Parents and families should help their children in order to foster their heritage language, which is Farsi in this case. And then endorsing cultural values. If, if, if a family does not intro, uh, endorse Iranian cultural values, how they are supposed to be successful in maintaining Farsi as a heritage language. So one needs to endorse no rules, yalda, all these values that we have, humanity, first human rights written by Iranians, deep culture, deep history, all these values needs to be endorsed in the family so that children have motivation to, to learn, second generation children in the Iranian families to have motivation to learn Farsi. And they need to also establish a strong monolingual family network. So, you know, unfortunately, not many Iranians are in contact with other Persian speakers, Farsi speakers, and maintaining these networks and monolingual fam familial networks just 
be having yeah. interactions, regular interactions, meetings, and visit with other Iranian families could really help those families to maintain Farsi as heritage language in their own families. And additional strategies also include time allotment for um, heritage language use. There is really great opportunity for you to say that, yeah, um, we are going to speak Farsi, for example, for three, at least three hours a day, just allocating some time for, for just using and learning and speaking that heritage language. And then visiting homeland, just taking their children visit to Iran and paying a visit to Iran and Iranian families back there. So it's a great strategy to help families to maintain Farsi as heritage language in Iranian American um, families in the US. And then enhancing children's interactions with heritage language uh, speaking peers. Even though we living here, we have uh, most of our families left in Iran. It's the case for most of them, at least for me. But keeping in contact, even if it's via Zoom, even if it's virtually, could really help, you know, to enhance um, these learn, uh, sorry, these children's appreciation of Farsi as heritage language. And then finally, enrolling in uh, Farsi classes. It's also one of the strategies to help maintain Farsi as the dominant heritage language. And then uh, parental feedback and linguistic support in daily interactions are corner stores of heritage language maintenance. It goes without saying that, you know, helping, giving feedback, just um, working on different language skills, whether it is speaking, reading, writing, listening in Farsi and giving feedback to their children is one of the greatest strategies in order to enhance um, second generation children's understanding of the heritage language. Re um, researchers uh, have shown that bilingual children have a less than 20% exposure to one of their mother tongues, their heritage languages. So that's why they become reluctant to use that language. If they have less than 20% exposure, which research shows, so how they are supposed to be fluent and or just be familiar with language or be able to communicate in that her heritage language. Among Persian speaking Iranians in the United States, attending Persian schools and using home based strategies such as watching TV and reading books in Persian seem to be very effective in maintaining Farsi as their heritage language. And uh, let's talk about um, some families that describe their beliefs about Farsi and you know enhancing their second generation children's understanding of Farsi. Many families that were um, examined in some of the studies that I looked for, they uh, positively endorsed their children's learning Farsi as um, as official as sorry heritage language, and they said that they use different patterns of language practices at home. So they use different strategies in order to. Um, enhance their children's exposure to language. Some families almost entirely endorse Persian only fa language family. They said that in our homes, the only language that is, speak that is spoken is Farsi Persian. It's Persian only. So even if our children come to our house, our death to home and start speaking English or any other target language, we switch to Farsi no matter what. Some of the families said that we say that uh, even though we can communicate in English, but they, we say that, oh, sorry, I, I, I'm really not good at speaking English. So they, to, in order to switch the language to Farsi so that their children um, tend to use Farsi as much as possible at home. So many families endorse this policy of Farsi only family language policies. However, others said mixed mixed language policies like Farsi and English. And mostly some of them also you said that no, uh, their language policy is just English only. So three groups of families, the highest person they told that they entirely endorse. <laughs> So many Iranian Americans living in the United States start um, endorse the 
Farsi only family policy. Then the next group of them, mixed language policy, Farsi and English. And lastly, some of them preferred indoors English only family language policy. So, and parents who reported using just Farsi only family language policy, they rated their children's Persian proficiency as high. Whereas those who used English family language policy, they rated their children's Persian proficiency very low, which is obvious. So in conclusion, I would say that a complex web of connections between the three family language policy elements and the sociopolitical context of both hosts, which is US, United States, and heritage country, which is Iran in this case, shape the language profiles of Iranian families in the United States. With a relatively small community of Iranians and the development of Persian, which largely which largely depends on the way languages are managed at home. So how Farsi is managed at home is the most influential factor in maintaining Farsi as the heritage language for Iranian Americans living in the United States. First generation immigrants who came to the United States alone to pursue higher education, most of the parents do not have access to an extended family. So enhancing these connections with the extended family is a top priority, could be a top priority for Iranian Americans in order to you know, uh, maintain Farsi as the heritage language. A few families are connected to Persian speaking communities, but not all of them. So it is highly, in order to uh, maintain this um, heritage language for us, it's highly recommended to expand connections between Iranian families in any community, whether it's Atlanta or any other areas in the United States. And uh, other than occasional gatherings, children should receive as much as exposure to Farsi, whether it's through movies, cartoons, TV, um, social media, books, or just sending um, children to Persian um, schools in order to take Farsi lessons. So in conclusion, the majority of Iranians living in the United States express a positive desire to maintain Farsi language and culture. And they attempted to fulfill this desire by having this Farsi only family language policy. So their only policy is that everyone should speak just Farsi at home. Upon the birth of the children in families, pa parents are determined to speak Farsi to them. Parents' language strategies take very different directions over the years based on their children's dual language development and their interest in speaking Farsi. As daily English speaking life setting, some parents, although not some Iranian parents, revisit their original ideas and they stop pressuring their children to speak Farsi at home. So it, research shows that even though they, they want to keep this connection, but as they grow up, they, they may change their family language policy and switch it to English or stop pressuring their children to speak in Farsi. In some cases, also gradually, they, they themselves reduce the use of heritage language Farsi. These results align with findings in the literature that parents tend to give up attempts to maintain heritage language once they observe their children's constant use of the societal language, which is English in this case. And because of their own low, because of their low proficiency in English or because the fact that because of sociopolitical factors and sociocultural factors, English is highly promoted in the US. It's the language of the school, it's the language of media and other minority languages are not given the same amount of, you know, budgets and funds to be promoted. Although Iranian mothers show more uh, perseverance in using Farsi, fathers are determined to be strategic in their language use. So research shows that even though Farsi in Iranian families, mothers are more determined to speak Farsi and have their children speak in Farsi, but fathers need, seem to be more strategic and they maybe tend to use target language because they know that their uh, children's proficiency, excellent proficiency in English could play a big role in their success in the society, in the US society. 
all Iranian parents mentioned that the success and well-being of their children is the highest priority for them. But some parents believe that this, this well-being and success of their Iranian children, uh, I guess someone is asking question. Yeah, their, their well-being okay. and after that. But are you sure that you, uh, you are not changing your slides because you stay on one slide and you just talk about different things, you know? I just feel sure, that, yeah, yeah. These are the only just some strategies, some concluding. Yeah, but we didn't have I this. Would, yeah. We didn't have this. So go slide by slide, please, so that we follow you. You know. Sure, sure. So, um, so uh, most of Iranian families they believe that they want their children to be successful and to to be healthy mentally and in every aspect. But some parents believe that for in order for their children to be healthy and to be successful, they need to keep this connection with their heritage language, Farsi. Such parental beliefs signify an embedded drive for course assimilation in the society. The magnitude of educational, social, and political opportunities linked to the dominant language and culture send a loud message to immigrant parents. They, they, they say that, Monolingualism, English only policy does not gonna work. So preventing heritage language loss, loss of Farsi in new generations of Iranian Americans needs ubiquitous awareness among Iranian parents, Iranian children, educators and policymakers. Understanding language policies, beliefs, and strategies in bilingual families can help educators support Iranian children's dual language development, lang development of Farsi in addition to English, and uh, so that they can communicate in both languages effectively. Family language policies studies can they serve as educational tools for informing parents in immigrant communities. The findings of family language policies show that parents play a big role in, in maintaining heritage language Farsi. And among their parents, mothers play a bigger role. And the findings show that the mothers, they are interested in making connections with heritage language in Iranian society. But there are socio-political factors that influence it. One of them is the fact that Farsi Iranians are associated with like Islam and other things. And the fact that they also want their children to be to have perfect English proficiency. So as they grow up, if they may stop pressuring their children to speak Farsi. And some if, if families endorse their role of Farsi in their second generation's um, well-being and success in the society, some strategies that they could use is that uh, they, they enhance exposure to their heritage language Farsi as much as possible by speaking Farsi at home by interacting uh, with their children using Farsi and sending their children to uh, Persian classes, taking Farsi lessons, taking their children to, the, to their homeland, Iran, visiting extended family and keeping strong connections between Iranian families in the United States. So these are some strategies, helpful strategies that Iranian families in the United, living in the United States could, could use to maintain Farsi as the heritage language. And with that, we say Iran Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much for your presentation. It was very informative and uh, very well uh, spoken. And uh, uh, I, I just want to uh, mention that uh, Dr. Kolami, who's uh, very young, and she has just graduated from Arizona State uh, University. Uh, she prior to uh, to being uh, you know to actually finishing her studies, she uh, published uh, ten different articles you know in very very highly uh, respected uh, uh, linguistic journals you know. For that, I actually applaud.